So my name is Abiniza Mahdi. Uh, welcome to the session today, um, this evening. Uh, you're joining the ACP Friendly Business uh, conversation today. And it's very interesting to be in the room. Starting from morning, I've been talking about um, areas of ensuring that we're able to increase the level of investment um, in Kenya and the partnership between Kenya and the 27 member states of the EU. Uh, this uh, evening, I'm joined um, by um, three panelists. Um, uh, we have uh, Miguel uh, Campo, uh, who is the Director of STG Innovations and Economic Transformation at the EU. Uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Brian uh, Potelli, uh, who is a Chief Technical Advisor at UNIDO. He specifically said, don't say doctor, but I like mentioning yeah, titles, so. Uh, <laughs> quite okay. And we have uh, uh, Barnard Odiambo, Senior Policy Officer at Ken Invest. Um, so I'd like to welcome them uh, with a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we'll um, ideally start with uh, Miguel, uh, just telling us a little bit um, about um, your what are you doing? Uh, just uh, starting off with a conversation so that we kind of get a gist of uh, where we are in terms of what, um, your program. Uh, and we see the linkage between uh, the discussion of the day, which is increasing investments and trade between uh, Kenya and the EU. Uh, and then we'll go to uh, Brian Botelli, who will also give us a small uh, snapshot. And we we'll finish off with Brian Odiambo. Um, but I also will open up uh, the floor so that we're able to ask questions. So it's more or less like a conversation rather than uh, a lecture hall. Uh, because anyway, if you wanted to be in a lecture hall, you'd have gone to the university. Uh, we just want to have a discussion um, uh, this afternoon. So I welcome um, uh, Miguel uh, to take it off from here. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. I don't um, know if you want to sit, if you want to stand, uh, you're free. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. I'm good. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, just to clarify that I'm not director of, of uh, I think they also messed up with that, but basically I work in uh, the Director General for International Partnerships in the European Commission. But I am the father of this program, so that gives me the, entitles me to be here sitting today and, and I'm talking about the program and giving me a bit of context. I'll try to be very short because the interest, interesting part is what we've been doing in Kenya and, and that would be my, my, my colleagues in the panel presenting. But just to say that this is a program that was designed uh, back in 2018. And the idea was uh, to how can we support to improve the business environment and support producers in uh, a number of countries on the African, Caribbean, and Pacific in a different ways to be more effective. Mm -hmm. And back then, we decided to look at three main players in this area, which is UNIDO. Uh, the UN agency, uh, IDC, the International Trade Center, also UN agency and the World Bank. And I hope we could br bring them together to work uh, in a harmonized way and to be more impactful. So basically, we created this program that has a very, very long name. My, my boss always complains about the names I give to the program. She says I'm very bad at that, which I think is true. But we call it, for sure, we call it the business plan. And the business plan, basically, the idea was how we can use the World Bank where they're best at, which is working on policy reform, how we can use uh, UNIDO where they really are strong, which is supporting investment promotion agencies, and how we can use ITC to support producers. But we wanted something else, and we can go to the next slide. We wanted for, for those three actors to work in a way where they would be connected and we would take advantage of that connection. So we wanted ITC to have a dialogue with the World Bank. The, the previous slide, please. Um, ITC to have a dialogue with the World Bank for the World Bank when they were discussing policy reforms to understand what producers needed, what was the issue for producers, what kind of reforms they were looking for to be able to be more effective at connected value chains. Also ITC to work with UNIDO in terms of when promotion agencies are trying to design their strategy, how can they be more effective in identifying sectors which are relevant for, uh, for certain uh, value chains and producers. And then you need to work with the World Bank, informing each other to how we can be more effective in, on the one hand, doing reforms, and on the other hand, uh, supporting investment promoters agencies. So we built this program, and we've been working over the last five years on this program. 
And today we are here basically to present some of the results that we got. We've done very exciting things. We Unido has developed an investment pl platform that we will see that, as you will see, it's very hands-on, it's very concrete, because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is, on the one hand, support SMEs, attract investments, but also create a an environment, a business environment that is conducive, where business can really thrive. And we do this with very practical tools beyond the usual capacity building. We also do it by attracting financing. And this, is, this program is one of the examples of how we, the European Commission, we're trying to do this through different tools supporting countries like Kenya. So I'll stop here and give the floor to my uh, co-panelists to because they are the ones who have the most interesting contribution and then happy to answer any questions you might have a little uh, after the, the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, if you're the father, uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, which <laughs> member of the family I, I am. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, making time also to uh, listen to what we have to say about the ACP Business Friendly Program. Um, you asked a question about uh, how do we contribute to the very important themes that are being discussed uh, today. I think the, the fact that uh, we're talking about business friendly uh, environment that is conducive to business opportunities and investment promotion is, is, is one of them. It's also the element of partnership that, uh, of course, you can see it uh, happening uh, in every corridor and in every, uh, in, every, uh, in every room. So our program is basically, um, our contribution at least, is to uh, emphasize uh, support that can uh, go through the, the elements of investment promotion and facilitation to uh, investment promotion agencies like Can Invest, but not only in a way that uh, produces uh, or contributes in a, in a concrete manner to the, to the, to the discussion. Uh, next slide, please. Um, given the time available, uh, I wanted to make uh, just three main points, essentially. First, give you a very brief uh, overview of the framework. How do we work? The second is the results to date. Uh, slowly a bit, <laughs> results to date give you some uh, an indication of what we have achieved so far. We still have way, uh, but uh, I think uh, a number of important uh, results have been achieved so far. And uh, I would I would I would finish by 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 uh, making reference to the partnership. So in terms of the framework, next slide please. Uh, essentially, here we're talking about two, uh, two main, uh, three main elements. We're working on the uh, importance aspect of the investment relationship management. So, to what extent uh, are the existing investors in the Kenyan economy being facilitated, being taken good care of? Uh, let's not forget that 60% of any new investment flowing in the economy is coming from those existing here. So. Uh, I'm very happy uh, in the sessions this afternoon that uh, many, many investors that have been established here for a long time are sharing their experiences. This is the type of support uh, that these investors need to be, need to be uh, continuously having. Um, second point was the, the investment uh, uh, opportunity profiling and packaging. Uh, this is very important in the sense that it's not enough and this is also coming from our experience working with a number of IPAs, it's not enough to say that, that uh, an economy has a, a, say a certain competitive advantage in a sector, uh, so there are uh, sector targeting policies, but one needs to go down to the level of the details of where the opportunities are. And of course, to try to transform concepts and abstracts into a packaged investment opportunity that can be uh, that, that can be promoted and targeted to potential investors. Thirdly, but definitely not, uh, not the last, is the, the, uh, the practical support in terms of promotion, the targeting of investors, the, the uh, undertaking and animating events like, like what we have today. Um, essentially, these three uh, dimensions are aimed to improve the business environment on the one hand, as well as facilitate the uh, investment promotion and new investment opportunities. Again, the investment, uh, improving the business environment is, is fundamentally important because the new investors must know uh, and must be aware that the environment is conducive to the investment. And uh, how we're doing this? We're doing this through uh, a lot of uh, work 
with uh, primarily with um, can invest as the investment promotion agency in 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 capacity building with staff receiving regular ad hoc uh, capacity building and hand holding support making sure that can invest itself uh, knows its client uh, very well so what we have done over the past uh, 16 months is basically to update the FDI directory of can invest with uh, a clear plan now to start uh, outreach of investors and retention services among 208 investors and then of course increasing more over time given resources availability we cannot go fast but at the same time this is very important because this uh, proximity to the existing investors would also support the fdi intelligence uh, capacity of the organization and of course all other stakeholder institutions uh, Berna will uh, will explain uh, the extent of collaboration with other institutions, but also to uh, to make sure that uh, there is a, uh, a facilitation, a, a real aftercare support to existing investors. Lastly, but definitely not least, is the work that we've done on the investment opportunity profiling. So, um, as you might have seen from the slide, it comes back. We have uh, right now on a, a digital uh, investment profiling system, which I will refer to in, in a minute. We have uh, 77 investment opportunities being formulated, including 45 that have been already published on the Invest in ACP portal, which uh, I will refer to uh, in the following uh, slide. And uh, other, of course, opportunities that are uh, at the data entry stage or planned. So. When we look at these 45 investment opportunities, we're talking about this platform that uh, UNIDO has developed as part of the ACP Business Friendly Program. So it's very important to align with uh, what else is happening in the countries where we are working, as in the case of Kenya. So we are very much looking into uh, important themes like sustainable agriculture, like uh, environmental and renewable energy, like uh, digitalization, also very importantly, women and youth empowerment. So. These are, uh, let's say, teams that are being captured via via some of the, 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 the main objectives of these investment opportunities. Um, in terms of entities with whom we're working, of course, we're working with CanInvest, but uh, CanInvest is working with many other organizations in the public as well as the private sector. So we're working with SMEs, we're working with micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. We're working also with regional development agencies with uh, county governments and uh, my colleague Bernard will explain in more detail the extent of work that we're doing. We're doing this because we want to expand as much as possible the impact of, of our work. So um, concerning the uh, investment opportunities, next slide please. Uh, this is not meant to be read, but just to give you, uh, and the next uh, click please, just give you a very snap snapshot of the type of projects we have. We have projects in agriculture, cashew nuts, solar power generation. We have uh, uh, rapid diagnostic test kits. We have uh, solar energy. We have mango. We have uh, affordable housing. So there are big projects. There are smaller projects. There are projects which are greenfield. There are projects which are uh, part and parcel of uh, joint ventures with existing micro and small and medium sized enterprises. So the tickets are various. So I think this is also very important to, 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 to highlight. Um, we prepared a very small uh, uh, clip, which uh, does, tries to do justice to the uh, Invest in ACP portal. You can actually uh, scan the QR code, which you find on a business card behind you, where you can browse the, the, uh, all the essential elements or information on the Invest in ACP portal. But essentially here we are showcasing these investment opportunities at the country level. So showing in the case of uh, Kenya uh, with uh, a number of uh, important uh, search filter criteria uh, at uh, the level of sector, at the level of investment type. So these are what we can call a summary sheets, uh, teasers of projects that ha have been uh, identified and formulated uh, together with the, the technical team of, of Ken Invest from different uh, parts of the country, as we said, from different sectors. It's basically, um, and then the idea is to showcase 
and complement all other investment opportunity uh, activities that the organization is, is, is currently undertaking. So on the public-based public, uh, uh, public uh, based website, you find these uh, short um, uh, summary sheets. Uh, however, on, on the on the on the search for the criteria, one can of course look into different tiers of uh, investment tickets, SDG investment types, also alignment with EF, EFSD plus uh, thematics that uh, were discussed uh, also this morning, and also the type of uh, source entity type, basically who is behind the project. Behind the portal, there is yet another digital system that we have developed, which you are seeing on screen which is the digital investment profiling system, which is a closed system, which is only being used by those partners like can invest uh, for the data management, for the data uploading. So here essentially behind the short summary of the investment opportunity that you find on the Invest in ACP portal, there's a, a much elaborated document uh, which uh, comprises information about who is behind the project, but also what the project is about. And I think the best aspect of, of course, explaining this, uh, this part of the process is also to emphasize that the information and data is, is based on a very uh, rigid uh, governance system where quality is much more important than quantity. So quality of the data, the checks, the validation, the elements of, of uh, validity of, of, of certain variables and information that is provided by the, 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 the various project sponsors. Um, next uh, slide, please. So this is, was just a very quick clip, but really invite you to scan uh, the, um, those business cards to take you immediately to the Invest in ACB portal. And for in case of Kenya, go look uh, under the Kenya flag projects and you will find information on the 45 projects. So last slide I wanted to share with you is basically the, the element of partnership here. We have developed with, together with our partners, the Commission and uh, the World Bank and ITC and also OECPS is as a digital platform for investment demand and supply brokerage. So we understand, and this has been also mentioned several times today already, there's a lot of demand, there's a huge demand for investment coming from uh, MSMEs, from SMEs, from value chain operators, from greenfield projects, PPPs are becoming more and more important. SDG projects, sustainability is the name of the game on the one hand, and supply of capital on the other. So, of course, there's always the reference to the missing middle. And of course, there uh, this morning, I think the, uh, some colleagues were saying that the missing middle is being bridged. Maybe, maybe not. The idea is basically that maybe for some of these MSMEs, for the SMEs, there's still a lot to be done, and this is also where our capacity building comes in. So we want to uh, take this opportunity. Our presence here is not to only to present this uh, half an hour presentation, but also to speak to you in the corridors, exchange views, exchange contacts, because we want to expand this partnership with uh, the local institutions, but also with those uh, potential investors, business partners that would like to be part of this, uh, of this, of this platform. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Brian and, and Miguel. Let's appreciate them. Uh, uh, awesome. I think even as you, I mean, you, you kind of give us um, a little bit a snippet of, of the project itself. Uh, I am beginning to have questions uh, that we'll, I will raise later. Uh, and the questions and, and not uh, from, from the perspective of how can we build on the relationships and partnerships that we have here with the platforms, for example, that you've just presented. Um, and, and, and you talked about three levels. I'll be coming to the questions where you talked about uh, uh, micro level, uh, meso, um, and, and, the, and the micro. Um, possibly not everyone here is an economist that would be able to understand those terms. Uh, would want you to demystify some of uh, uh, those terms you, you use. But before that, Let's get to, to Bernard uh, to give us also uh, uh, from his perspective on, uh, on the project. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, um, oh. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 
uh, this session. Um, we, I call ourselves the, the co-implementing partner of the program at the Kenyan level. And uh, as Miguel said that uh, he's the dad, um, now Brian does not know where he falls, neither do I. Um, but all the same, uh, he's been a good father because uh, through him, we have been able to make uh, the Kenyan entrepreneurs dream. They dare to dream. They dare to dream so that uh, their aspirations can be achieved in the long run. That where we sit in Kenya, somebody in Europe can be able, at the click of a button, look at their project and say, yes, I believe in this dream. And I want to dream with this person. Next slide, please. So um, when you look at uh, Kenya Regional Authority, I'll not really delve into much about the institution, but our work is basically to ensure that we promote Kenya as the best investment institution you can ever invest in within the continent of Africa. Um, we do that through three key areas. So we do investment promotion, that's opportunity development and promotion, then facilitation, investors come and we ensure that we give them a soft landing both domestic investors as well as foreign direct investors. Then we also have policy advocacy. Uh, one thing is that, uh, yes, the investment environment is very fluid. So the policies that worked 10 years ago may be a hindrance currently. So at Ken Invest, we scan the environment, working behind the scenes to ensure that uh, we help the government realize that some of the policies that we have in place are not facilitative enough. And through the partnership that we have with UNIDO, we have worked with UNIDO for so, such a long time, um, spanning over a decade uh, to come this far. Next slide. So when we look at um, the SCP business-friendly concept, then we have got the work stream that help us to establish investor relationship management. Now with that is that we develop a directory of investment um, contacts that we have to ensure that we are able to ascertain that, ascertain that we have so much investment in Kenya worth so many millions of dollars and employing so many people. So because they say you can only, you know, what you don't measure, you may not be able to grow. So for us to grow investment, we need to know what we have in stock in Kenya. And then that really helps us because again, if we want to do linkages, we have to know that we have so many investors in different sectors who we can link to other investors who are in need of their services. Um, then we have got Team 2.2, that is basically on investment opportunity profiling, uh, opportunity development. So we develop opportunities for promotion locally and internationally. And um, that sums up um, the business friendly uh, program, but we are still scaling it up. And through the support of the European Union, and UNIDO, we have been able to come this far. So how does this fit in the Kenyan government system? From time memorial, we have never had investment as part and parcel of a government administration. But um, since um, uh, from the executive order of uh, the first executive order 2023 by the president, he created or he rebranded the ministry of, uh, it used to be Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. So investments were nowhere, but you find Ken Invest was there. So he rebranded it to read the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry, giving investment a critical role in the government because for the government to grow, it has to grow through investment. So if you don't have investment as a, give, uh, as a strategic provision within government, then it can't be addressed. Then through that ministry, the president created another state department, specifically charged with investment promotion to handle issues investment so that it can span across the industry, you know, from health to agriculture, to manufacturing, to blue economy, across all those sectors. So that is the state department for investment promotion handles the policy aspect of that. Then under that state department is Kenya Investment Authority. Now it is through Kenya Investment Authority that the EU-funded business-friendly SCP program came into being. And with the technical support of UNIDO, UNIDO, we have worked with the UNIDO for in a number of projects, program, from the Subcontinent partner, partner, Partnership Exchange, which has really re also recorded quite some success. So through the business-friendly program, then we have been able to, first of all, 
um, establish a credible investor database. That's number one. Number two, we have been able to reach out to Kenyan investors. Those who have been there, they have folded, rolled up their sleeves and put up concepts. They have been doing business, but they have the dream to grow. So they have put up these concepts together. And through the digital investment opportunity profiling system, we have been able to put it together and upload it so that it can be accessible beyond the Kenyan borders. And through that, we generate bankable uh, investment opportunities. And that we do through engagement with the private sector players as well as public sector players. And uh, as, as Brian had shown in his presentation, you, you saw the portal. So that's where the opportunities are. And uh, Miguel being a good father, we are going to take back the opportunities to him because he's in Europe and we are in Kenya, so that he funded the project, he should ensure that he uploads the project, isn't it? To investors. So uh, for our investors who are here today, uh, Miguel is going to go to the portal, ensure that the 45 projects are offloaded to, to Europe so that we can find partners who can invest in our ideas. But do we only work with Kenin, in, within Can Invest? No. We are trying to scale and go beyond. So of late, we have been trying to reach out to our county governments because, you know, investments takes place in the counties. So we have been meeting the CECs and the governors to ensure that we impart the good news that we have from our development partners to ensure that the counties also are part and parcel of the process. Because when we segregate it to Can Invest, then it does not receive that wholesome ownership. But when we bring the counties on board and also integrate their officers into the program, then we can but go far. But then what have we been doing apart from the counties? Two weeks ago, we also brought together government agencies that we call them project promoters. They can either be um, state corporations or uh, ministries, departments and, and ministries. So we brought them together to educate them, to enlighten them on how do we go about now pitching? Because when you generate a profile, now when you want to meet an investor, you love to come up with a pitch, a pitch deck. So it is crystallizing the idea that you have in, on your investment and putting it in a format whereby it, within 10 minutes, you'll be able to convince somebody who is in that business to talk to you further and invest in a business. And ladies and gentlemen, if you look at uh, the screens, uh, you can see, although Brand has shown this, but this is the work that we have done. If you see on your, um, I don't know if it's on your right or on your left, from, from my side, it's on my right, there is e-opportunities portal. Now that one, if you look at it, it is a Ken, uh, Ken Invest portal that the domain is Kenyan. But look at the investment.unido.org slash ACP slash Kenya. When you look at that, it look, look, at that, look at the domain and it shows you that it gains ownership and credibility across the globe. So that investors who search for Unido will definitely see, come across this, that's the, that domain. And the word that that shows, it shows us that they'll be able to log in and see what is behind the, the domain. Look at the projects and be able to invest in it. So for those of us who would want their projects profiled and promoted, Kenya Investment Authority is here for you and will help you reach where you want to reach. One thing is that investment promotion, attracting an investment opportunity or an investor to be in your business takes time. You may be lucky, it may be within, the, within one month, but um, talking to our peers, our seniors in the game of investment promotion, you find that to, to land an impact investor for a country, it can take as much as five, six, seven years. That was Costa Rica, Sinde, telling us that it took them seven years to land a strategic investor. So it is not a sprint. It is a marathon. So it may take a short time. It may take a long time. But the only thing is that you should dare dream. And when you dare dream, somebody will also dream with you and be able to see that they can live within your dream and your dream will become a reality. As I finish, I'd just like to, Brian, to recognize um, some of the entrepreneurs who have profiled, some of the companies, just to stand up and wave, just to 
if we are properly a project, we have got um, Joseph, we have got uh, Ruth, we've got um, John. So uh, we are proper their projects, and um, they are. So if we are proper, those are three of them, but there are 40, 42 more who are not in this room today. They have dared to dream, and we believe that their dream, together with Can Invest, Unido, and the European Union, it will come to pass. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate it. Um, is it working? Good. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Miguel, Brian, and, and Ben are just talking about the uh, SCP business-friendly uh, uh, project. And, and ideally, before I got to Bernard, I had the question where you had indicated that you have three levels of intervention. So you talked about the micro, macro, and meso. Uh, kindly take take us through that in, in, in a short... Uh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but I, I'll take this opportunity to say two more things. <laughs> Beyond awesome, awesome. First awesome. is that I forgot at the beginning to say, and, and I would kill myself for not having said that, this is not only a European Union project, it also is also with the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States, which are a key partner for us. And this is one of many projects that we have with them. And they're uh, really behind this project and have been supporting it from the beginning. Um, then I'll answer your question and I will finish with another comment. Uh, so micro, meso and macro, it's really, I mean, we could spend one hour here explaining, but for, for the purpose of this project specifically, Micro, we are referring to working directly with producers, providing training, capacity building, linking them to value chains, regional and international value chains, helping them to comply with standards so they can really put their products out there in the market. That's what ITC is doing. That's what we call micro level in this project. Meso level is what we just heard from Unido, from Can Invest, which is meaning working with intermediary organizations that are in looking at how to promote investments, in this case, Can Invest and supporting them to be able to identify and work better with those investors and then also be able to promote investment opportunities. And the macro level, which is what the World Bank is doing in this particular case, is focusing specifically on regulatory and policy reforms, working directly with the ministries, discussing what kind of reforms can be put in place to increase competitiveness, to be uh, able to create a better environment for, for SME development and for investments. And what we're trying to do in this project is connect those three worlds, which we often see them uh, being supported through different programs, but we rarely see them connected. There is no conversation between what the producer needs and the, the big regulation, or, or maybe there's not as much conversation as we would like between what KInvest is trying to do as an overall strategy for the country, and maybe some of the discussions that are taking place on how to promote foreign direct investment in the country. So this is basically what we're trying to do. And my final comment, and, and I'll stop here, is that uh, we, as European Commission, as OECPS, uh, as UNIDO, and, and following the, the, the example or the metaphor that Bernard was saying about this is a marathon, we can try to provide the, the shoes and the, the pants and, 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 and train them a bit. But at the end of the day, and, and they can create the platform and identify uh, investment opportunities. But we, we talk in this kind of business forums all the time about how to, how to connect investors and investees, how to connect companies and investors. And, and this tool is one of many, but one that we think is extremely useful. It creates ownership because it's done directly by the implement investment promotion agencies of the 14 countries we're working in. But it only works if it's really used, both by uh, businesses like the ones we have here today, showcasing their opportunities, but also by investors looking into it and trying to identify opportunities. We, as European Commission, strongly believe in this platform because Unido has a very comprehensive system to guarantee that anything that is in this platform has solvency. And we just need now everyone to use it and, and, and we can continue to feed the platform. But of course, it will only work if we see at the end of the day that that results in investment. So I just want to really uh, um, ask for everyone to take this opportunity to, to support what Ken Invest is doing and use these kind of tools that we're putting in place to, to make a better project. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Miguel, for for for, uh, for I mean, taking us through the different levels um, under the project. Uh, so one question that comes into mind when you talk about the, uh, the platform and the three levels of intervention that you're implementing, uh, I'm thinking to myself, if I'm an, an investor seated in this room and I had about the platform, 
one of the questions that comes into mind will be how do you assess uh, this, these organizations? Because then that will help me understand the portfolio you're looking at and the dynamics uh, of the businesses. For example, if I'm an investor, I would want to know um, the, in, in terms of the product uh, that they are producing, uh, I'll want to understand uh, the value chain. Uh, I will also want to understand uh, the financials. Um, and then within the financials, possibly you will use the capital budgeting analysis, pro probably use IRR or use ARR uh, or payback uh, to determine the period I will be able to get my returns. So as an investor sitting in the room, those are the questions that will be coming to mind. So I want to pose a question to Bernard. Um, how do you assess some of these companies that you then uh, uh, put on the platform for investors to look out for? Um, and, as you, and as you're answering that question, I'll go back to, uh, to you and, and ask, um, uh, you also had a list of uh, projects that are ready. Um, what are the three uh, most uh, appetizing opportunities for investment that you, you uh, will say are critical for Kenya? Because I saw a list of about uh, 30 or 40 or so uh, with the list that you had. And I think uh, from my photographic memory, I remember three. I saw fish farming, uh, I saw bee uh, keeping, and uh, I think I saw something on um, um, agriculture so, uh, within the list. Uh, so those are the three that jumped out of uh, the screen for me. So I'll be coming back to you, but let's start with Bernard. Uh, thank you. Um, how we assess the enterprises that we do profile, there is uh, a tool that we use. It is called an investment opportunity profiling tool. So that tool we share with the investors and then they have to feed it. Then sometimes we'll, if they cannot feed it, we'll go and, and, and sit with them and go through each and every section with them. Uh, now, if this tool is incomplete, the system you will not be able to complete in the system because when you apply in the system, there are mandatory fields that you have to fill. So if those mandatory fields are not available um, from the investor side, then we can proceed. But when those, so we guide them, we get the investors on how to go about completing the tool. And then after they've done that, now the work reverts back to, to our team. Uh, we have got, as Brian said, we have a team of 21 staff members of Kenya Investment Authority. Uh, some in Nairobi and some spread across the region. Actually, one of my colleagues, a profiler, certified profiler, is seated behind there, uh, Stanley. So that's the team that, uh, together with the other colleagues who are in the office and in the region, they ensure that they sit with the investor and go through that project bit by bit, numbers, number by number, until it is complete. If it is not complete, we'll tell the investor kindly, go and get this information for us so that we can complete it. Yeah, sure. But I would also want to understand, let's say you give us three indicators or I don't know, four indicators, as I mentioned, uh, professional is here, that you, you're looking at as a business. Because you mentioned you have three businesses. Uh, what are three indicators possibly that you're incorporating within your assessment? So I don't know if you'll answer or... Yeah. Okay, Brent. Can... I mean, you mentioned I mean, let's say an essential point of any investment pitch is information. Uh, it's useless that you have an investment pitch with basic, very abstract information because when you sit down for the B2G, you don't have anything to say back to the investor. So that's the first thing that starts. When uh, uh, in the case of uh, Can Invest, they approach the companies, they approach the project promoters, could be a ministry, could be a, a parastatal company. Uh, this tool helps to start clarifying, but of course, it's not the, uh, it doesn't cover everything. And we are not, of course, policing the, uh, the, 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 the we go and check every single uh, information that is shared. However, what we check is 
the validation between certain variables that are included in this tool. So you cannot be a small a micro enterprise with barely 5,000 uh, USD uh, in turnover and you're asking for an investment which is 20 times as much. Uh, so it's not the mind about uh, providing information and filling the tool. And then basically that is then validated through a process which uh, that's where the qualitative checks and that's where most of the time or some of the time uh, information has to be sent back because more clarity is required. So in addition to that, you need also have other uh, elements of training. You mentioned IRR, so we have a, a very specialized uh, uh, software called Comfar, which essentially helps to do undertake uh, project feasibility assessment. But before you move on to the next that level, you need some basic information, and that basic information we hope that we are moving more closely to having that basic information that can then take us to the next level. Is it enough? It's never enough. Is it sufficient to start the marathon? Yes, it is. Because of course, if you have information, if you have clarity of where you want to go, uh, you might also be able to sit down with an equity bank, clarifying exactly what is this business plan of yours and what are your expectations and what are your resources and what are your limitations. So this is basically the, 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 the journey that we have started. Thank, thank you, Bernard, and thank you, uh, uh, Brian. Um, so, I mean, looking at the portfolio that you also presented, because I was, I was coming back to you yes. um, after after Barnard, um, with with the list of potential areas of investment, uh, what would you say are the top three opportunities for investment, particularly for Kenya? Because I know you, the project is 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 quite diverse uh, in different countries, uh, and I know for Kenya you're looking at the uh, three levels, meso. Uh, micro and uh, and, and uh, micro and macro. Uh, other countries, you're looking at one element. So, just teasing out uh, with the people in the room, what would you say are the three that you're seeing? Are, um, yes, yes. I think uh, one of the first questions that actually we ask our partners is, do you have a strategy of uh, sector targeting? Because, of course, uh, you have to start looking for investment opportunities linked to those sectors that are being actively promoted. In the case of Kenya, it is undoubtedly agro-processing because we also have been discussing this morning about the need to increase value addition. So more investment is required. The uh, inclusion of new technology in, uh, in uh, cultivation, harvesting, etc. So all these are elements which are, which are very important to, uh, to put forward greener solutions for even most basic manufacturing, so sustainable production. So you see there uh, also some projects which are also in the manufacturing sector. But there are also other greenfield projects which are coming mainly from the public sector, I would say, which are meant to uh, determine very important changes in the, also the standard of living of the population, like e-mobility like affordable housing, like health-related uh, investment intervention. So the idea here is, of course, to, to uh, go back to the, those uh, project promoters to maybe brush off uh, their, their, uh, their abstracts, their, their project abstracts, and try to see if there is something out of this, because out there, there might be investors willing to invest in that particular sector. So there are impact investors only looking to invest in SDG-related sectors, for example. Of course, you have the equity investors jumping on the opportunities which represent high growth. There are the traditional uh, foreign direct investors who are setting up uh, activities and production activities. So the list is endless, but it starts with the with the with the uh, targeting of the sector at the at the country level. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Miguel. Um, and now I want to bring in a little bit Miguel into the discussion. Uh, but uh, before we also get to him, we'll also uh, allow you to ask some questions uh, as we proceed. Uh, so uh, not a question and, and we'll come back to you. Uh, so Miguel, I mean, looking at the system itself, it's a very good platform uh, to bring together um, an investor and an entity that would like to inject in more uh, capital, either to upscale a technology or just grow the business. Um, what would you say are some of the challenges um, 
I mean, to, to be able to utilize this particular uh, platform. Because sitting here and listening to it, it it's, it's a very uh, interesting platform that should be adopted by, uh, I mean, all countries. Uh, just looking at the portfolio of investment that they have. Uh, but I'm also thinking to myself, if it's, it, it's this good, so why are countries, some of the countries not really adopting it or utilizing it, and yet it's, it's a good resource? What are, what are the challenges? So thank you, thank you for the question. Uh, the challenges are, I mean, we, we, we discuss this very lightly with, with UNIDO uh, for, for, for a long time, because the challenge for me, it's, it's simple and complicated at the same time. The, the first challenge is how trustworthy this platform is perceived, how much businesses find it useful because indeed it creates investments, how much investors find it useful because indeed they find that they can identify opportunities for them. That, that would be, for, for me, the big challenge. And, and that's why we are doing a, a very uh, intensive exercise with our colleagues in UNIDO. They're doing it by themselves, but sometimes with us in disseminating this platform as much as possible in this kind of fora to make sure that it's known and that people understand how it works and, and trust the, 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 the platform as a, as a useful tool. Now, regarding how to extend this beyond, beyond uh, to other countries, well, we're, we're actually on it. Uh, we, we are trying to identify other sources of financing. But of course, it's not only the platform. We have to this as, see this as a whole. It's also the support that Kenya Invest has received from the program to uh, the, the capacity building, the discussion on the strategy, the joint identification of opportunities, and that takes resources from, from, from their own organizations, from the government, or from supporters, uh, donors like ourselves. So we are working on that, and we're trying to expand. Um, every time we discuss with other colleagues from other countries, with other governments, uh, about this recurrent issue of how to attract investments, we always bring the platform as an opportunity for them. But of course, it will take time. It will take time, and 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 we just have to uh, walk uh, the talk. I mean, we just have to showcase that indeed this is a platform that works, that indeed creates opportunities. And I think as soon as we start seeing how these things uh, play out, more and more investors will start thinking that it's a reliable instrument. Maybe not the only instrument, because we have to be realistic. There will be other tools out there to connect. But at least that is a useful instrument. And as something that I've discussed with, with Brian in the past, not only an instrument for foreign uh, investors, it's also an instrument for investors that are already present in the country, who know more or less the market, but are looking for other opportunities, and where they can look at this platform and see, OK, well, this seems interesting. Let me dig a bit deeper into this and see if this is something I want to support through my uh, fund, through my investment or angel investment or whatever. So I think uh, basically by, by disseminating, by showcasing that is trust, that you can trust the information, that there's a solid organization behind it like UNIDO, I think we will be able, we hope we will be able to make it, a, I don't know, global, but at least regional uh, platform and that it will really create uh, uh, investment opportunities. Thank, thank you so much, Miguel. I think your, your opening uh, remark was uh, um, uh, quite profound because you said it's simple yet complicated. Uh, and then it went back to the trust issue. So, I mean, listening to it, yes, it's simple in terms of saying it's a trust issue, but complicated because then you have to trust the information that is within the system, uh, which is another element then that requires for you to get the correct information, uh, ensure that you conduct your due diligence uh, so that the investor who's coming in is able to trust the information you put out there and say, I can trust your analysis to say, why can I uh, not invest in two companies or so? Uh, now we open up the uh, search, I mean, we open it up to, um, to the floor for questions uh, to the panel. Um, so we have, do we have a roaming mic? mic? Uh, we can have a question here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll take this opportunity first and foremost to acknowledge you know, what you know, we've talked about here, and particularly as with regard to the investment promotion po uh, portal, the portal that you know, we've been talking about. Uh, I would like to acknowledge that uh, it is indeed a, a, a beautiful portal, and it is indeed a tool that many of us you know, can use just for purposes you know, of 
having a feel of the investment scenario that you know we are having in ACP. Uh, as Bernard mentioned, you know we happen to have learned about this a little while ago, and we went ahead and registered ourselves, and we've learned one or two things along the way. So one of the things that I'd really like you know to share with you is that the format of how data is presented in that portfolio is such that we will do well. We will do well if we increase the options you know, that can be made available so that any investor anywhere can see the pointers you know, to the investment opportunities or areas that are there. And to give you a typical example here is we happen to be in an area that does small medical items. Uh, but because of the, the nature of how this all this information is presented in the, in, in, the in, in, in the portal is such that we actually end up being listed under pharmaceuticals. So basically you'll agree with me that for any investor you know who's interested in where we are, uh, he might end up flipping through the pages and not easily find us. So this is just a sharing. Uh, uh, and I shared with the office and they were kind enough, actually they're doing something about it. So I'm just giving it an acknowledgement and at the same time acknowledging you know, how beautiful it is. It is good. It is very, very good. If somebody in the Caribbean you know, can learn about you know, the investment opportunities in Kenya, I think it's, there's no question about it. It's beautiful. So that's one. I'll just finish with, whereas that's the case since you know, we started interacting you know, with Kenya Invest and particularly Bernard, uh, we've been, we've been, we've been, we've been interested, you know, in following up, you know, so that you know we have a good feel of what is happening. But uh, I'm sure Bernard, you know, will agree with me that you know we of course have to wait for your guidance, uh, you know, so that you know we get to learn what is happening and at what point, you know, perhaps you know can we can we come in strongly. But what I'm saying is there are lessons, of course. I'm sure everybody's learning. And some of us, you know, perhaps are in a situation, you know, whereby we could add to that big effort, you know, making all this open and readily available and contribute to your, to what you are targeting, contribute to making this information available globally and contribute, you know, to perhaps tailoring or just making sure that everything that uh, uh, you're working on is, is put in place as should be the case. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for, for the um, acknowledgement uh, and sharing also the, the lessons that uh, we, uh, as a project, could, could borrow and improve on, uh, which is quite interesting, as you mentioned. Uh, the categorization sometimes might make an investor not uh, find the right person and just uh, flip through, um, which, is, which is very important. Could, could seem like a small thing, but as you said, simple yet complex <laughs> comes back to that um yeah so you didn't mention your name uh would be good also to to know your name uh, uh because listening to you i thought i was listening to ian bogo who is a judge at tax project fame <laughs> Joseph Omar. thank you there was another hand at the back very well, thank you. That was a very informative session. Thank you very much. My name is Maina from Youth Motion Kenya and Intercount Youth Forum for Business Networking on Trade Development in, and Investment in our 47 counties. So uh, I was just wishing to maybe seek clarification from our good brother from Ken Invest. That was, uh, I can see a lot of improvement from there. But I was wishing to know if you can elaborate further on what is the, like just giving us a greater picture of how this tool the you know the embodying tools look look like in terms of what is the threshold of a startup or a project or an enterprise to be enlisted for i mean in there and then uh have you tried to assess the level of awareness of you know the general public i would of course be biased asking how the level of awareness of such a facility by young people, because of course I'm young, but what is the level, have you assessed the level of awareness of, of the general public on the availability of this facility so that we can be able to uptake it? And if you have, 
do you do like outreaches or virtual sessions to just make people know about it? Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, uh, I presume that question goes to, to Bernard, uh, so we'll be able to address it. But before we do, um, uh, please, Madam, you, you have a mic. You can. You can um, good afternoon. My name is Rosemary, uh, an economist. Um, and also doing youth empowerment uh, in entrepreneurship. My question was you talked of invest, uh, investors' uh, relations taking like five to six years. I'm just wondering if I'm going to stay uh, for five to six years with an investor, what will I be doing? So we would like to, to, to analyze what is it that it's taking so long, five to six years, that you can reduce that to one to two years. Once I get into an investor, um, oh, why would I not take one to two years and I, I, I take off with the investor? And in terms of, of course, of capacity building and in terms of... Um, levels of knowledge and awareness in, when it comes to uh, the women and the youth. Um, uh, the capacity building in terms of even this program, as my friend has said, needs to be looked in terms of, uh, uh, have you trained people maybe to get to the levels of getting to this uh, program and, and, and which are the areas that you need to train them so that we we'll be able to can take off and maybe get to, you, to, your, to you the, the program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for those two questions. I think uh, we can take those two questions first. Uh, question number one is about uh, the level of awareness um, of the public in terms of the portal. Uh, question number two is the turnaround time uh, between getting to know about an investment opportunity and investing. Um, I think we can start with Bernard, but Brian and Miguel, feel free to, to also contribute. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for, for these questions. I think the first one was, uh, I should elaborate on how the tool looks like. Um, now the tool, basically, uh, we have got, uh, can be a soft copy or we can print a hard copy. Ideally, a guide, a guide on the kind of information we should feed into the system. So it will look at uh, your business background. Um, then you'll also go to your business strength. What is your vision like? Then if you are already in business, then you need to know like uh, what is your history like in terms of production, if the service offering, um, how many clients do you have? Uh, are you aware of your market? Then if you want to maybe have another facility, then you look at uh, areas pertaining to what kind of machine do you need if it is manufacturing? Or what do you, do, do you want to bring it, new technology do you want to bring into the business? And how much does it cost? Because when you look at the amount on investment you need, the capital investment uh, from a partner, then it should be based on something. You don't, you don't just put it that I need, um, say, a million euros, and we can't trace it back to where it's going to fit into the business. And then also to show that, you see, when you want an investor to come, I say, like, um, I remember when I was employed, like 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I, I, I met an investor, I would say an investor who had land, said that I, I have five acres of land and I need to build a hospital. Now, then I asked him, okay, so how much money do you have? Because maybe five acres of land, even if you say that it's a, a million, say uh, one acre will cost us like 8 million shillings or 10 million shillings, that is only 50 million. But a hospital will be maybe... Um, it goes into hundreds of millions so and they say that you want minority uh fdi by minority shareholding so how, how can that work out so again we need to be you know pragmatic on what we need um that is basically a summary on what the tool will give you if you are in production now we'll go deeper and look at what are you how many kilograms are you producing or how many liters of whatever the product is and calculate it based on how much do you produce in a year? So we go all to that detail. That's why I said it's a bit detailed. Um, and then when we look at accessing the level of awareness availability, um, Miguel said that uh, the conceptualization of the program was in 2018. Now, Unido uh, called for his one of interest from Kenya in 2019. Then we got to start in 2020 when Brian was just about to fly into the country, COVID hit. 
and uh, you know the UN protocols he couldn't come so we had to we had to do things virtually you know we had to learn now on the job start zoom meetings and trainings were done virtually and it really prolonged the process so i will say that we were starting to find our footing even the government restrictions were wearing off in 2022 so we were to start finding our foot in 2022 and uh, we started on uh, business business directory development which is internal doc in, in, in internal database and then we went to opportunity profiling development and that after we are done that as we are doing the development opportunities then we say, say let us reach out to other government entities they've, they've got the devolved government system so we reached out to counties we have reached out to 35 counties as at now then it is through these counties now that will form a, a launch pad for reaching out to the women the youth and other players in in in, in the country and besides the countries we are also reached out to uh, two weeks ago two weeks ago a week ago we were with now other government agencies regional development authorities so that we can inculcate in them the concept of the business friendly program and then work with them now to ensure that we develop a whole round kenya not just can invest so that is where we are talking about investor relations uh, actually investment attraction i said it's a marathon you may put out your wish list outside there in terms of opportunity that you'll want an investor to come in it can take even one month actually it can even take one week because you have got your feasibility study everything is ready you go and present and somebody says i'm on this you see but assuming that you'll want to build maybe a toyota in kenya and you'll want an investor to come you know that is some massive amount of money so uh, when we were uh, liaising with Sinde, Sinde is Costa Rica uh, uh, co for, uh, uh, can invest for Costa Rica, so to say. So they told us that it's an impact investor. You know, impact investors can employ as much as 1,000 people. 1,000, and if you look at the trickle down effect, it can even go to maybe 10,000 people down the value chain. So that one, uh, for you to attract them because they lead cost from the government, tax rebates, and all those. Uh, incentive that they, they may require so they have to be tailored for them that's why i said it can take longer to attract an impact investor than attract an investor to my company because for my company it will depend on how ready am i in terms of my documentation my vision is it clear enough if it is clear enough even today the investors from the eu will meet you discuss with you and tell you okay i think we should discuss more and one month down the line you have closed the deal thank you uh, thank you so much, uh, Bernard. Uh, Miguel and um, Brian, do you have something to add as we uh, wind up? Yes, I think I, because uh, the battery is very important. But I think the issue about the awareness, I think, is very important. Let's keep also in mind that this portal was officially launched mid-September last year, so it's uh, it's only five years old, uh, five months old. So, not enough time to. We were working. Uh, to raise the awareness, not only the awareness from those who have a project and calling for investment, but also raising awareness among those who are searching for projects. So it's very important that to emphasize the fact that we are creating the facilitatory platform for visibility. We are not guaranteeing anybody that investment is coming. However, what we want to do is, and what we are doing with many of our partners is that we are changing the, let's say, the passive investment promotion into a more proactive investment promotion. So we want this to be a joint effort. So you need or cannot be uh, mobilizing investments to all ACP countries, uh, 79 of them, plus others that want to work with us, in addition to also creating the critical mass. But of course, what we can do and what we are doing is that we sit down, we look where the opportunities are, on the basis of this very important information of projects of opportunities where can the targeting uh, be uh, focused and this is basically what we're doing with uh, can invest with uh, many other, other, other entities. so it's a process but uh, we'll get there thank you Th thank you so much uh, brian miguel I'll, I'll be brief to to let our colleagues do their, their next presentation uh, just to say that we, we don't pretend to have found the holy grail we just have built the tool that we think is a good tool 
that makes sense. But we really appreciate comments like the one you have. We have to learn from things that are not working well um, and from others. I think uh, we are extremely open to, to listen to any positive or negative criticism uh, to this tool because at the end of the day, our objective is clear. We just want to connect investors and investees. And if what we've done has something that needs to be improved, let's do it because we just want to learn as we go and be effective in what we're trying to do. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. So thank you so much. Uh, let's appreciate Miguel, Brian, and Barnett uh, for the presentation. Uh, I think just closing up, uh, listening to them, uh, I hear the uh, one thing that comes into mind was that uh, within this session, we're looking at opportunities for investment. And uh, this will be a great platform for countries to adopt uh, because it's, it's, it's a nice way to uh, present a portfolio within a, within a company. And I remember this meme that says, uh, this meeting would have been an email. Uh, with that, I close. Thank you so much for coming to the session. Thank you.